the learning that's what uh, we have taken it up the covid 19 has in a positive way we have been continuously organizing uh, e symposium make week webinar series and other webinar series and the uh, online quiz programs for the betterment of the students community and the mechanical engineering fraternity so in continuation to that the talk of the town the hype of the india or hype of the globe i could say electric vehicle many of us uh, are seeing in newspapers and other uh, digital medias electric vehicle is going to be the future but still now the basics of electric vehicle is not uh, known to many of us so this webinar would deal all the basics of electric vehicles battery electric vehicles and the technology behind it so dr m prabhakar has arranged a wonderful uh, webinar session for the young uh, students community and as a faculty fraternity so i take this opportunity in welcoming our uh, all the participants our professor l professor at our department coordinator dr m prabhakar faculty colleagues from aviit and the other uh, participants from the various institutions i request professor l prabhakar to deliver the formal welcome address for this program thank you sandil it's indeed my immense pleasure uh, to welcome the participants from uh, there is various parts of the country includes includes uh, faculty members as well as uh, students and uh, and a resource person through ganesh shankaran chief program uh, officer that is with chief program engineer ford motor company limited and through ramakrishnan suswa subramaniam is senior engineer programs product development ford motors and uh, all others uh, uh, good morning to one and all so i really thank uh, the dr m prabhakar professor dr m prabhakar and sindil for arranging such a wonderful uh, webinar on a topic that is emerging topic basics of battery electric vehicle and technology overview every mechanical engineer should know because uh, in another uh, one or two years we, we are going to have more number of uh, battery vehicles electric battery vehicles all on the road definitely people if you if you say as a mechanical engineer a lot of questions will be asked on you how it works how it runs what is the procedure what is how we have to maintain every details that we have to learn so this is the right platform uh, that we are arranging for the students to learn what is the basic things because you can do certain projects you can uh, uh, come up with your idea to enhance more uh, it is uh, uh, possibilities of uh, modifications or doing some innovative ideas and bringing that and uh, apply in your project so i thank the uh, uh, resource person to accept our invitation and come and join join here for giving a wonderful session thanks thanks to all and we have of the department of mechanical engineering as i used to say we are conducting uh, regularly a large number of uh, online events uh, whatever that we have planned during for original there is a academic calendar the same thing uh, we we never missed to that we, uh, we conducted all the programs started with a number of webinars technical symposium now we are planning to conduct and uh, national conference and also the value added training all these things are possible only because of the support that we are getting from the management i really thank our uh, honorable chancellor dr uh, a s ganesan and uh, our uh, principal uh, dr k l shanmuganathan for helping us in getting all this uh, uh, approval for conducting such initiatives and also with the support of uh, faculty members especially professors like dr prabhakar sendil and uh, praveen we are conducting a uh, number of uh, events and uh, hope that we will uh, you people will get a lot of uh, other uh, notification from the department uh, in conducting such events i request all to join us and uh, try to improve your knowledge skills again i am just giving a reminder national conference is scheduled on 25th and 26th please drop uh, because most of the people the final year students can present their paper the pg scholars can the uh, pg students can uh, submit their paper even the third year can write a review paper during the lockdown the paper will be published in uh, few uh, scopus and text journal which is an lcr publications definitely uh, utilize this opportunity and also um, register for that cnc turning definitely you have a good experience in learning the things which we, you cannot get uh, generally that course fees is around uh, comes around 1500 1250 but we are giving it at free of cost considering the current situation now okay mm -hmm. and over there, i don't want to take much time already we are running short of time because few of the technical issues were there now i hand over the session to dr m prabha 
to brief about the theme of this particular uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your uh, warm welcome. Knowing an unknown is always interesting, as used to say. Even Dr. Prabhagar has kept a battery vehicle as the background for it, to symbol symbolically saying about the battery vehicle. So I welcome Dr. Prabhagar to give away the theme of uh, today's webinar, the reasons for the theme webinar. Dr. Prabhagar, please. Thank you, Sindhil. I thank the management of uh, Vinayakam Sensei Foundation and Arbitrary Institute of Technology and our HOD, Prof. Rail Prabhu, and our principal, vice principal, campus directors, and all our uh, department faculty members. I, uh, uh, I thank in this wonderful occasion and uh, for, for this wonderful seminar, webinars. I thank the participants also. And uh, I just uh, want to bring if a, a small introduction about that uh, theme of this webinar. Actually, uh, due to that uh, increasing prices of petroleum products and the cost of depletion of fossil fuels, there will be an ordinary uh, duty of researchers to find some alternative mode of transporting uh, vehicles. Uh, like uh, we need to convert our migrated from IC engine based automobiles to battery operated electric vehicles. And uh, now, because of this battery operated uh, electric vehicles, one point of time, it will likely to replace conventional IC engine automobile technology soon. And uh, Pune is a major automobile hub of India. Tata Motors, Bajaj Auto, Kinetic Engineering have their automobile manufacturing units at Pune. Like the similar fashion, Ford Motor, Hyundai, Nissan, Renault, and Yamaha have their automobile manufacturing units at Chennai. And many automobile manufacturing units also there in Nasik and Mumbai. Apart from this, uh, uh, major companies, small units like uh, small and the medium sized industrial uh, units such as Golan Engineering, Martin Frank, and uh, Technovision already they started their development of various components for battery operated electric vehicles. However, there are some common issues related to battery operated vehicles like uh, specific uh, capacity of the uh, battery, design of controllers, design of battery charges with the specific applications to electric vehicles. Development of testing facility for testing of electric motors, controllers, and battery chargers. In this situation, the industry institute interaction will play a key role, and part of R&D and the testing activities can get a diverted education institution with adequate infrastructure. This webinar emphasizes basic details regarding characteristics of battery-operated electric vehicles like driving range, battery cost, lack of charging infrastructure, customer pain points in electric vehicle purchases in that view, and. Uh, Technological advancement, one way it is helpful for the human being for their comfortable and uh, sophisticated uh, life lead. But in another way, it leads a lot of uh, problems, like, you know, uh, as like uh, side effects. Say, for example, the, 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 by the time when we started introducing that IC engine, it was much helpful for that uh, people to transport from one point to another point uh, by means of that uh, automobile vehicles. But on the side, now it is a a big, uh, big threat for the environmental pollution. Like the similar version, the year 1907, uh, the scientists from the US first introduced plastics, like uh, first, uh, what is that, a synthetic uh, polymer plastic called backlight. And uh, during that time, it will play a wonderful role in that uh, industry side, everywhere that uh, the plastic uh, products are uh, there. Now, it will be a biggest threat for the uh, community and society uh, for their, uh, you know, like uh, side effects. There is no uh, disposal uh, proper disposal technologies are there for uh, plastics and like the similar person now government started encouraging that battery operated vehicles and uh, I thought so after 15 or 20 years there will be a big, a big problem for uh, disposing of uh, battery it, it, it may be a biggest challenge for us uh, but uh, I think uh, I hope uh, that today's webinar will give that insights also our uh, chief guest definitely will uh, touch upon this aspect also uh, though a lot of advantages are there by, your, by using that battery operated vehicles because it is uh, environmental pollution free. But on other side, we have to think about after 15 years uh, scenario also. And uh, by this, I conclude this uh, uh, introduction session with the theme of that uh, webinar. I'll hand over the session to Sintin. Thank you, Dr. Prabhagar, for the insights you have given about this uh, webinar. Uh, it's my privilege in uh, giving a brief introduction for the two eminent speakers of this uh, electric vehicle domain. 
the first and the first speaker would be mr ganesh shankaran who has uh, finished his uh, ug and pg in cat and also pg dba in marketing he is the chief program engineer programs ford motor company limited chennai he has got of uh, 20 plus years of automotive experience welcome you sir i also take the opportunity in uh, welcoming ramakrishnan sivasubramanian who is basically an electrical engineer and a management person also he has completed mba in operations and supply chain management currently the senior manager programs product development from the ford motor company limited chennai with the 8 plus years of automotive experience so it's a great pleasure in having you both of both experts from this uh, domain of electric vehicle the arena is yours sir please uh, present us the basics of electric vehicle and the technology overview good morning uh, and thank you for the uh, introduction uh, dr santhal dr prabhakar dr prabhu so with that uh, ram i hope uh, you can uh, take a control and share the screen please put it in a slide mode if you can okay thank you so what we have decided today is basically to take you through some of the basics of the battery electric vehicle and the technology overview um uh, before i just start that uh, we would like to give a simple uh, disclaimer the disclaimer is uh, whatever the contents that we use or shown in this uh, presentation it is more of the information that we collected and referenced from a uh, lot of research papers and uh, white papers the common journals available in the internet and whatever the views that we express in this document it is primarily of ours and we don't represent this view from a company or an industry's point of view so though we taken uh, enough cares and measures to ensure every data and the information whatever we presented is accurate if there are any mistakes or uh, omissions you know uh, it is a, it is a whole responsibility of uh, uh, the presenters which is myself and uh, ram and uh, it doesn't represent the organization's view thank you if you are okay just go to the next slide please ram yeah today what we would like to do is uh, we would like to cover uh, different topics and we wanted to cover the session uh, you know in a, a two phases one is i will be covering the global trends in ev what are all the ev scenario in india and how the indian government ev policy is helping and why we need ev with that i will hand over the session to ram ram will talk about the types of electric vehicles advantages of battery electric vehicle over the ic vehicle that is internal combustion engine vehicles and he will talk about the electrical systems and the selection of the components and the future technologies in the battery area and with that ram will stop then i will take over again we will cover the last topics of the challenges and opportunities lying in the bev area and battery swapping and the leasing and finally we will open out the floor for question and answers so if you guys are okay we will start with the global trends that's the first topic of the agenda okay so it is really important to understand uh, what is currently happening at a global level then we will come to the india level this chart is very interesting if you see there is a two time scales been given one is the number of vehicles sold on the y axis and the time scale from 2015 to 2040 it shows how the sales growth of the vehicles from ice which is internal combustion engine and plug in hybrid electric vehicle which is phev and the pure battery electric vehicle which is of our interest today which is bev so if we see today's state which is 2020 so it is not even 1 million number of battery electric vehicle globally because it is not so popular because of so many challenges in cost and technology but the trend is going towards in favor of battery electric vehicle if we see for a 2025 we are expecting anywhere between 8 to 10 millions of electric vehicles are going to be in the field but our projections are always at a long term period if we see at a 2030 the expectation is about a 20 million and by 2040 we will be reaching about a 57 millions of battery electric vehicle in the field and this chart is also showing another trend the growing bev but at the same time you see there is a decreasing trend happening on the ic vehicles which we will talk in the next slide next slide please yeah 
this is another interesting slide on your left what you are seeing is the current trend and the future trend about ic vehicle sales in terms of passenger vehicles and similarly how about the growth of the ev vehicle sales in terms of the passenger vehicles by 2015 today the segment is completely dominated by ic that is what you see the ic vehicles are assumed at 100 percentage and we are less than a one percentage for a ev but the this trend is going to go completely opposite for example the ic vehicles are seeing a downward trend whereas the ev vehicles are seeing an upward trend so as we covered in the previous topic by 2040 there is a break even is going to happen meaning the i the ev vehicles will take a dominant position compared to the ic vehicles you can ask the question why because you might be seen in the papers and other things the emission norms and uh, even further regulatory norms are getting a lot more stringent and there are newer regulations are coming up so which poses a very very stringent tasks against the ic vehicles which ultimately gives a way for ev vehicles to grow so for example the stage four to stage six we recently migrated so something similar to that there are much more stringent targets coming for ice so this is the reason why ev vehicles are growing from an environmental and regulation point of view the chart on the right it shows how the global share of vehicles by each of the segment very interesting to note if you see from today's trend even till 2040 the heavy vehicles like the buses and light commercial vehicles especially from an electrical point of view it shows a lot of positive trend this could primarily because the city urbanizations are happening city restrictions are happening growing economy the road so uh, the transportation is improving there are a lot of uh, e-commerce activities are growing up so that gives a very very advantage for the heavy segment and mass transportation and a heavy goods movement are helping this particular segment to grow from an electrification point of view next slide please yeah this slide is again uh, to give you a glimpse of how the EV adaptation is happen at the regional level. The left side chart shows today the scenario from 2015 to 2030, 2023, sorry. I think uh, as you all expected today, the China is dominating the entire uh, EV vehicles population followed by Europe and US. Today, if you see the near term between now till 2023, the growth could be about a 15 percentage where China is dominating, but the trend is not going to go and uh, remain the same because every country is working on the long term plan for EV adaptation. If you see the trend, just after 2023 to 2040 you could see china could still be there but whatever the china's market share is equally dominated by europe and us because they are trying to overtake this market because two reasons why china's keep improving because china's the government's policy is very much supportive of the ev policy both at the national level and the regional level so that is the reason why continuously they are leading on all the evs in all the segments and why Europe, which is a very interesting question. As you know, Europe is very, very particular about the fuel economy targets and the improving environmental regulations. So these are the two reasons why Europe is also actively working on and improving the EV adaptation. Next slide. Okay. So now that we have seen the uh, global trend, let's come to the uh, India side of the business. So as you all know, the Indian automotive industry today it is standing at the fifth largest in the world. And uh, what we're expecting is by 2030, India will reach it to a third place. And with the government of India's uh, mobility initiative is very clear. The government is pushing more from uh, shared mobility, connected mobility and electric mobility. This is the policy with which Niti Aayog and all the government's policies are working for the EVs. And if you see the shared mobility, today India is moving from an individual transportation methodologies to a mass transportation, which is what you call it as shared mobility. And this is the reason why you see there are so many taxi aggregators and uh, shared mobility uh, providers like the Ola's, Ubers, they, have, uh, they are coming up heavily. And if you see, there is one recent statistics, the number of rides which uh, Ola and Uber, they offered to the common public, which was about 130 million rides in 2015. And it's almost tripled to about a 500 million rides in 2016. So you could see within one year, they tripled, which 
today the ola and uber they are representing the market to an extent of 70 to percentage so this is the one very important reason why how the shared mobility is very very important for india especially where we have a lot of population and we need a mass transportation from point a to point b so here is the reason why we think that could be an economic advantages of a larger adoption of uh, electric vehicle for our country next slide next slide please ram yeah thank you and uh, this is another uh, uh, important slide for us to note so what if if the evs are, doesn't take up for example what you see is two important graphs one today if i don't do anything which is called as baeu which is nothing but business as usual transformative is what if if i follow the electric vehicles path so if i don't do anything our global energy consumption is likely to keep increasing trend and if you see today we are at about 50 millions and our energy requirements can go almost five times more by 2030 but at some point of time say for example by 2020 if we start adopting the ev the total energy consumption is drastically coming down especially for a passenger segment to an extent of 64% but as you all know the number of vehicles also equally contributing to the you know overall emissions so same thing the number of millions of carbon dioxide emission per year is also calculated so if i don't do anything so we will be at about a 600 million tons of carbon dioxide we will be keep emitting from now till 2030 but at the same time when you start taking an electrical path you will see a reduction of 37 percentage so 37 percentage is a very very huge number and we would like to cover about india's ev policy why india has created an ev policy and what are all the key objectives of that it is primarily to reduce the overall oil consumption as you know india is primarily depending on the oil consumption from various countries we import oil heavily so we wanted to reduce that and also we wanted to provide the end customer let us people like you and me to have the electric vehicles and then create an environment for clean energy vehicles and at the same time we also wanted to improve and use the cutting edge technology you know mainly on the ev side of the business and sometimes it also very important to note that it is not just a question of offering the transportation it has to be economical as well as you know the electric vehicles operating costs are much more cheaper than the uh, gasoline or diesel powered engines and end of the day we are reducing the pollutions across the city and we also can create a manufacturing capacity in all the uh, industries across india to use the ev manufacturing facilities like the batteries cells motors so thereby we can create a global competitiveness we can export components from india and the last one is by which there is an opportunity to create an employment growth in all the uh, upcoming sector which is the ev next slide please yeah today the uh, india's electric vehicle sales is shown on the left top side figure you can see the trend has increased from 27 to 2018 especially on the three wheeler segment so the overall population has moved from 576 vehicles to 7 lakh especially the growth is happening in the three wheeler and the two wheeler segment you see the four wheelers are very very minuscule it is only increased to about 1200 to 3600 there are there are many reasons why it is happening because this is only an upcoming area every oem in india especially for a four wheeler segment they are trying their level best to uh, create a, a, an ecosystem for offering an electric vehicle offering a good range at a affordable price point so that the customer can still use this vehicle in place of an ic vehicle so that trend is coming up and recently from government side also government has recently floated a tender and they procured close to 10000 uh, electric vehicles for the use of government officials and there is also another trend going on to procure the electrical buses for 11 major cities you know these are all the initiatives from the government side so the one thing is like there are a lot of projections and studies going on like uh, uh, we wanted to create a vision that by 2030 every vehicles 
in india has to be 100 percentage electrical but we know what are all the obstacles and the hard rocks that we have so our estimate is anywhere between 40 to 40 percentage of uh, ev conversion from current ice it's it's a realistic expectation but what we see is for a sustainable ev growth there are four factors that are very important we need to have a uh, very good products which is uh, meeting the end customer demand so product is one thing and geography so independent of the places and we need to create an ecosystem so that it's got the adequate uh, technology it's got the adequate infrastructure these are all the four or five critical factors for a sustainable ev growth from 2018 or 2019 to 2025 which is the near term next slide please ram the slide has to load fully i guess yeah thank you so what is happening from the uh, government side let's quickly check what is the india's the government ev policy we call it as a fame 2 which is the faster adaptation and manufacturing of uh, electrical vehicles the first line is very important for example if you see the government has allocated a demand incentive of close to 8500 crores across various segments that segments are given in the right hand side table for example the 8500 crores is given for each of the vehicle uh, segments for example two wheelers three wheelers four wheelers and the hybrid vehicles just for the argument or uh, just for this uh, benefit of this training let's focus on the right hand side table and the row number 3 which is the e four wheelers so the government has allocated close to 525 crores and for every kilowatt hour of the battery the government is giving a subsidy of uh, 10000 rupees so the maximum capping is about a 15 lakh so if your vehicle is 15 kilowatt you can get a subsidy close to 1 lakh 50000 rupees and you are expected to uh, uh, maximum retail price of the vehicle should be 15 lakhs and these are all the uh, government's uh, uh, guidelines so this helps the manufacturers in two wheeler three wheeler and four wheeler industries to you know invest a uh, huge amount of capital to make electric vehicles and the question can also come from the other side so what is the incentive for the purchaser for the people like you and me so that is given in the left hand say left hand side bottom table for two wheelers approximately you will get an incentive of close to 20000 for three wheeler it is 50000 and as i said for passenger vehicle the maximum benefit what you can get is 1 lakh 50000 but this is at a purchasing price itself but apart from that the every state government has got their own uh, ev policies and they are also coming up with a lot of uh, offers like uh, waiving off uh, the registration the road tax and the license plates and the gsts so there are so many benefits that both from government side and at the state side they are giving to encourage the purchase of uh, ev vehicles in india next slide please let the slide get loaded please so why ev so we need to understand what are all the driving forces so india government has already created a plan called national electric mobility mission plan 2020 which was got released in the year of 2013 and there is a another interesting article from uh, tony seba so he's a, a stanford's a professor and he he is a author of the famous book the clean disruption of energy and transportation so his forecast by 2030 most of our energy needs will be satisfied by solar and wind when it comes to the automotive segment right so it is all the new cars will be electrically powered meaning electric vehicles and all these cars will be autonomous india has got a, a, a long way to go especially for a self driving vehicles and other interesting thing and the last factor is when the new market is happening so people are trying to use the cars as a mobility service they don't want to individually own the car they will prefer to use the cars as a sharing model or as a mobility as a service for example again uh, uber or ola type of model because they don't want to own the cars but they just want to use the service so these are all the primary reasons why uh, ev is gaining popularity in india so with that i will just stop here and hand over the session to ram to continue on the technical portion of the bevs go ahead ram
team. I uh, hope you are able to hear me. Okay, uh, so thank you, Ganesh, and the good morning, team. So we will go through the types of electric vehicles as the next topic. So we will also see what are the types of electric vehicles in comparison with that of the internal combustion engine. As we know, the internal combustion engine, this is a conventional engine uh, used in the petrol and diesel cars in which the combustion of the fuel occurs with the oxidizer in the combustion chamber. There is an integral part of the working fluid flow circuit. In IC engine, high temperature and high pressure gases produced by the combustion force the piston for a linear motion and the slider crank mechanism transfers this linear motion into a rotary motion. And the transmission is further used to transfer this rotation to drive this. This is the basics of an internal combustion engine. Now we will go through uh, the different types of electric vehicles to start with the micro hybrid. This is the lowest level of vehicle hybridization. It uses the start-stop system where the regenerative braking technology helps to stop the combustion engine when the vehicle comes to your home, so probably in a traffic signal. Here, the energy stored in an auxiliary battery is used in order to quickly start the engine when accelerated. So one of such examples of a micro-hybrid is uh, Mahindra Scorpio. Next type is the mild hybrid vehicle. The mild hybrid vehicle is also known as the power assist hybrid or the battery assist hybrid vehicles. And these are the cars with an internal combustion engine equipped with an electric motor and generator setup in a parallel hybrid configuration, allowing the engine to be turned off whenever the car is coasting, braking, or stopped. Yet it can restart quickly. Mild hybrids may employ the regenerative braking as what we saw uh, in the micro hybrid and some level of power assist to the internal combustion engine, but they do not have an option of the electric only mode of propulsion. And the next type of uh, electric vehicle is the full hybrid vehicle. These are generally the cars that combine the conventional IC engine with an electric propulsion system. The presence of an electric powertrain is intended to achieve either better fuel economy than a conventional engine or a better performance. Using regenerative braking technology, the kinetic energy is converted to electrical energy, which in turn is stored in a battery. And H HEV, that is hybrid electric vehicles, also employs start-stop system. And the hybrid electric vehicles produce less tailpipe emission when compared to the a similar sized petrol or diesel engine cars. And if the engine is not used in this type of vehicle to drive the car directly, it can be in turn geared to run at maximum efficiency, thereby the efficiency of the vehicle is further improved in this case. So the next type is the plug-in hybrid. And the plug-in hybrid electric vehicles uses a rechargeable batteries that can be restored to full charge by connecting the plug to an external electric power source. So this is one of the difference between the hybrid and plug-in hybrid. The hybrid vehicle, it does not have an external uh, connection where you can connect it to electrical grid, but the plug-in hybrid vehicle tends to do that. The plug-in hybrid electric vehicle has both the characteristics of a conventional hybrid electric vehicle and a full battery electric vehicle, because since it has uh, the external uh, connection to the electric grid, it can be even considered to that of a battery electric vehicle. And it has a much larger electric range as compared to that of a conventional gasoline or other types of hybrid vehicles. And it helps to eliminate the range anxiety associated with all electric vehicles because the combustion engine here works as a backup when the batteries are depleted. So the next type is a range extended electric vehicle. These are the types of vehicle in which uh, the auxiliary uh, range extender, we call it as auxiliary power unit or the range extender, is mainly used uh, as a support system to the battery electric. The most commonly used range extenders are the internal combustion engine, but sometimes fuel cells and other types of engines are also being used nowadays. And range extender drives the electric generator, which charges the battery, and which in turn drives the vehicle's electric motor. This arrangement, we usually call it a series hybrid combination. So the last but not the least, the battery electric vehicle. Um, 
It exclusively uses the chemical energy stored in the rechargeable battery packs, with no secondary source of propulsion. Uh, and battery electric vehicles uses electric motors and motor controllers for the propulsion, and they derive all the power from the battery packs, and thus they don't have any internal combustion engine or fuel tank in this case. So now we will go through some of the interesting facts on the range of pure electric motor against the hybrid and electric vehicles and what is the size of battery that is used in each and every segment. As you could see, uh, the micro hybrid and the mild hybrid, the contribution uh, of the pure electric motor towards the range is, uh, is actually zero kilometers because in this case, uh, the electric component is only help, it, it helps to only assist um, the internal combustion engine. And usually, the battery used here ranges around one kilowatt hour, weighing 10 to 50 kgs, and it uses a 48 volt system. If you take the hybrid vehicles, um, the component, the contribution of a pure electric motor ranges to eight kilometers with a battery capacity of 0.3 to 2 kilowatt hour and having a weight of 20 to 60 kg, that is one to three percentage of the total weight. Here it uses 100 to 300 volt system and the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle contributes uh, 50 to 80 kilometers on a pure electric motor range, having four to 20 kilowatt hour um, battery pack and weighing 100 to 200 kg, uh, four to 12 percentage of the total weight. And it operates in 200 to 400 volt system. The range extender and battery electric vehicle um, contribution is 150 to 500 kilometers with a battery pack ranging from 20 to 100 kilowatt hour. And the weight ranges from 200 to 700 kg, approximately 70 to 32 percentage of the total weight using a 350 to 400 volt system. So now we could see some of, uh, we can see some of the advantages of battery electric vehicle over the internal combustion engine. The first advantage is the energy efficiency of the electric motor, we could see it's 90 to 95 percent pitch, approximately five times more when compared to that of uh, the IC engine. And the next, um, electric vehicles are far more reliable. They have fewer moving parts and it's cheaper to maintain. EVs have a greater packaging flexibility since the drivetrain systems are simplified when compared to that of uh, the internal combustion engine. So the next advantage is on the cost factor. As you could see, the cost of lithium ion battery uh, in the year 2016-27, it was around $300 per kilowatt hour. And now it is around $200, kilowatt, $200 per kilowatt hour. And we forecast that the cost will still further reduce uh, in the year 2023 to 2024, uh, ranging to $100 per kilowatt hour. So considering this, this will eventually make the electric vehicle capital cost, including the battery, to be lower than that of internal combustion engine in, in the near future. And it also helps to promote the power dur during the off-peak times, considering mo most of the EVs are charged during the night times, and it also supports the good cost of the range. So the next advantage is considered to be one of uh, important uh, important to the Indian government also considering the pollution. The pollution is reduced uh, with the introduction of electric vehicles, which in turn addresses the ambient air quality concerns. And EVs with renewable energy, as what Ganesh explained before, absolutely zero pollution in this case. And we don't have any tailpipe emissions or zero carbon monoxide. And there are no issues of unburnt fuel mixture. There is the hydrocarbons and no oxides of hydrogen and the particulate matters. And the CO2 emission level is less when compared to that of petrol and diesel vehicles. So we have a few more advantages, so like EVs are four times cheaper in terms of the running cost per kilometers. And EVs address the import of oil, which is a dependent factor for the internal combustion engine uh, that mainly contributes to the energy security. And lower service cost, because of the less consumables, because there are no oil changes, spark plug, timing belt, and also unlike the gasoline engines, electric motor does not require routine maintenance. 
Electric vehicles suffer improved ride handling, responsiveness, and ride comfort. This is primarily due to the low center of gravity because of the battery packaging. It also um, helps to reduce the noise, vibration, and harshness is issues. And one of uh, the greatest advantage, what you could see here, EVs generate instant torque, thus offering a faster acceleration. So you could say right from zero RPM until the corner point, uh, we have entire torque available, and this helps for the fast transit. So the next advantage is on the transmission system. EVs have a single speed gearbox, given the torque and the speed range available. Multiple gear ratios are not necessary in this case, which in turn reduces the transmission uh, system complexity. So there are no torque converters, no clutch, no disconnects for electric vehicles. This in turn reduces the weight and associated losses. And for the same motor, the battery electric vehicle gearbox can be optimized with the help of the final drive ratio for a better launch performance, maximum speed, efficiency, and the drivability. As you can see from this figure, uh, the, when the final drive ratio is higher, uh, we have a better launch performance. That is, uh, the initial um, acceleration could be achieved in this case. But sooner, the top curve uh, decreases due to which the drivability may occur. But that can be addressed with the help of a lower fi final drive ratio. But this will in turn affect uh, the launch performance. So there can be a compromise between uh, the FDRs in order to achieve uh, the speed performance, efficiency, and drivability. So the next advantage is on um, the losses. So you could see the internal combustion engine. The total loss contributes to 68 to 72 percentage, contributing right from the idling losses to the power to wheels. Engine losses is there. But if you take the electric vehicles, the power to wheels is mm, actually 77 to 82 percentage available when compared to that of uh, the IC engine, which is only 16 to 25 percentage. So the losses are greatly reduced because of lesser components, what we uh, reviewed before. So now we can get into some of the technical stuffs of battery electric vehicle. And we can see the block diagrams on high voltage schematics. So um, how this electric vehicle actually operates? Um, this this should be uh, with the help of uh, the AC and DC the charging stations. So considering the DC charging stations, uh, the DC charging station helps for the power flow to the power distribution unit, which in turn charges the battery. And it also communicates to vehicle control unit, which is mainly for controlling the, the charging rate. And the next type of charging is the AC charging, uh, generally considered as a slow charging. So considering the battery to be of a DC storage, we must have a rectifier setup, uh, which we call it as an onboard charger, which converts AC to DC. And there is also a communication link uh, in order to control the charging rate for AC charging with the help of a vehicle control unit. So next is the motor controller, uh, which is nothing but an inverter system, uh, generally employs a six pulse inverter in advanced status, it's, it, it goes to the multi-level inverter. This helps to control the electric drivetrain, which is a combination of electric motor and the transmission system. So um, here are the batteries which we use for the electric propulsion. It is generally of high voltage systems. And in order to control uh, the auxiliary and control circuits like on uh, headlamps and other functions, we usually have an auxiliary battery. So in order to charge the auxiliary battery, the main battery has to support that, and which can be done with the help of a buck converter, that is a DC-DC converter. This in turn goes to the auxiliary battery. So other um, components of an electric vehicle is we have an e-compressor instead of a traditional uh, internal combustion compressor. And also the heater setup because the battery, in order to maintain the battery at an um, operating temperature, both heating and cooling process has to take place. And this communicates with the vehicle control unit in order to ensure the right parameters are set. And all these modules, like the battery management system, OBC convert rectifier, um, DC-DC converter, and vehicle control unit communicates to EVCAN, 
which in turn communicates to vehicle CAN with the help of a CAN gateway. Uh, this is a block diagram you could see. Um, the motor in turn uh, helps to drive uh, the drive wheels and also the DC-DC converter helps to charge the auxiliary battery. So we will now go for the system selections. Uh, the first component is electric motor and the drivetrain. So electric motor helps to convert the electrical energy that it gets from the battery to mechanical energy, which enables the vehicle to move. It also acts as a generator during regenerative action, which in turn charges the battery. And the electric motor and the drivetrain are predominantly chosen uh, based on the requirements, which includes high power, high torque, wide speed range, high efficiency, reliability, robustness, and reasonable cost, low noise, and small size. There are many parameters considered here. And uh, although the DC motor drives uh, meet some of the requirements of an EV application, due to lack in efficiency because of the bulky structure and lack in reliability uh, due to the commutator precious arrangement in them, uh, the DC motors are less desirable in case of the electric vehicle function. So with advancement of power electronics and the control systems, different motor types emerge to meet the need of automotive sector, out of which induction and permanent magnet motors are more favored for EV application. As we saw before, the final drive ratio of a single speed transmission system is optimized to meet the requirements of launch performance, efficiency, and reliability. So here is one of uh, uh, the example of uh, the motor, uh, which is used in Chevy Bolt. This is a permanent magnet synchronous motor with a capacity of 60 kilowatt power. And the torque is 360 Newton meters with a peak efficiency of 95%. And you could see the drive ratio is 7.05 is to one uh, with a vehicle top speed of 91 miles per hour. An interesting factor is zero to 60 miles per hour. The acceleration is 6.9 seconds. It's quite fast. So the next type, next you could see some of uh, the different types of motors that is being used in uh, the EVs, out of which the permanent magnet synchronous motor um, is more desirable. It's mainly due to the efficiency, compact in size, and high torque at low speed. Okay, now we could see uh, the charging systems. So for EV charging, both AC and DC systems can be used. And AC charging provides an AC supply that is converted to DC with the help of the onboard charger. Um, this is nothing but a rectifier, what we discussed before. And mainly this type of charging system is used in the home charging. And this charging takes um, six to seven hours, depending on the battery capacity and the charging rate. Next type of charging is the DC charging. This requires a dedicated wiring and installations and can be mounted at garages and the charging stations. They have more power when compared to that of the AC systems and can charge the EVs much faster. And it usually takes one hour for charging from zero to 80 percentage of the battery capacity. That is primarily depending on the battery capacity as well as uh, the charging rate. In case of the DC charging system, we could see the permanently connected EVAC cable that is for the safety purpose. And these are some of the IEC standards of the different charging types and out of which uh, most of uh, the charging connectors are used is combined charging system that is the CCS. So next is the energy systems. The batteries have been the major energy source for the EVs for a long time. And high energy density and high power density are the key consideration for the EV applications. Fast charging, long service life, low cost and maintenance are highly desired for a perfect energy source. And there are some of the parameters considered for a battery selection. As you could see, the energy density, uh, specific energy. The energy density is the proportion of energy that is included per volume. And against the kg that we call it as a specific energy, the power density, specific power, lifetime of the battery, the cycle life, number of charging and discharging cycles, the cost of the battery, operating temperature, uh, recharging time, and fast charging time. These are considered to be the primary parameters, and we also have some of the secondary parameters like the self-discharge. When the vehicle is stored, uh, how the self-discharge takes place, that also 
uh, determines the battery selection and the efficiency of the charging and the maintenance cost related to the charging. So the next is on the battery pack architecture. As you can see the screen, the cell, uh, it starts from the cell. The cell is a basic structure of the battery system, which is the primary source of the power for electric vehicle obtained with the help of electrochemical reaction. And here the electrical energy is obtained from the chemical reaction uh, and the flow of electrons thereby causing oxidation and reduction causes of the electrons. The next is the modules. Modules consist of cells arranged in series parallel combination, which is in turn determined based on the current and voltage requirements. Each module contains connectors with supervisory unit and also the circuit for the group of cells inside the modules within the mechanical structure. The, bad, the module may also contain uh, the fuses, bus bars, connections for uh, the safety purpose. And the group of modules here we could say contributes or uh, helps to achieve the battery system. And we also have the battery management system, the thermal management and other housing unit. Uh, this contributing to the battery system as a whole. The number of cells and their connections in series parallel combination depends on the system voltage requirements and the battery. So now uh, we can see um, the battery pack components and the functions. So the first one is the housing. The battery pack housing is the box that supports the whole system. The material generally used here is aluminum or steel. The next is uh, the battery thermal management. Its, its function is to cool or heat the battery. The next is the junction box or the electronics, which contains the battery management system and also has the bus bars and release. And uh, the next is a cell and modules, which we discussed before. However, the packaging efficiency is very important in selection in order to optimize the energy density and size of the energy system. So the next topic is the battery thermal management system. Since the battery performance directly depends on the operating temperature, the battery thermal management plays a very key role in the EV application. And there are three strategies commonly used for battery thermal management. Uh, the first type is the passive cooling where the ambient air circulation is deployed around the battery. And uh, this is the, the choice for cost optimization of the battery or the vehicle. But uh, this is not considered as an efficient method. The next type is the forced air cooling, which allows the cooled um, air to circulate inside the battery pack. This is a good compromise uh, between the cost and performance. The last type is the liquid cooling, uh, which allows the glycol uh, cooled by the refrigerant to flow through the cooling plates inside the battery pack. This is more efficient uh, uh, when compared to that of air cooling. However, the, the choice of cooling is a compromise between the cost and the cooling efficiency. Okay. So the next, we will go through the battery management system. The battery management system, um, it helps to monitor uh, and it helps to ensure the safe operating conditions for the battery systems. And it also acts as a control system for the battery, which helps to uh, ensure the operating conditions within the parameter range. And they may have a single circuit, which monitors the entire system or a master slave arrangement, as you could see in the architecture. One is the centralized topology where we have a battery management unit or a modular topology where we have a cell monitoring unit as a slave, uh, which helps to communicate to the master. And these helps to evaluate the parameters related to the state of health, state of charge, cell balancing, and cell monitoring of voltage, current, temperature, and high voltage isolations. BMS communicates to other control modules of electric vehicle, thereby ensuring the improved range, increased battery life, uh, thereby ensuring the monitoring and controlling of the charging and discharging patterns. So uh, now we'll take you through uh, the different battery cell types we have in the market. First is the cylindrical cell. The standard sizes corresponding to this is 18650-21700. And this is of a standard size. It has a steel casing and uh, with a low manufacturing cost. And it has a high energy density. Uh, with a high specific energy and a good mechanical stability. 
The next type is the pouch cell. And we don't have a standard size for the pouch cell. Each manufacturer designs its own uh, design or dimension. And it has a laminated back with a high energy density and high specific energy. Uh, one of the drawback for pouch cell manufacturing is uh, it requires a high stacking pressure and it's very sensitive to moisture and high pressure. The last type is the prismatic cell. It usually comes with the VDA standard, it's, uh, the German standard of PHEV2. And we also have the custom prismatic cells currently developed by CATL supplier. And it has aluminum and or steel casing with a decent energy density. And these types of cells are commonly used in the electric vehicles. Okay, now we will see the cell chemistry. Uh, lithium ion battery is uh, used for the EV application in spite of high cost. Uh, that is mainly due to its high energy density, good performance at a high temperature, recyclable uh, capabilities, low memory effect, and high specific energy and high specific power with a long battery length. However, the selection of cathode material of lithium ion uh, uh, determines the, the performance efficiency and the cost. So uh, now we can see what are the components that is considered for anode and cathode. The graphite being the most common anode material. Uh, now with the silicon addition to the graphite, uh, the silicon brings more specific energy. This is also used nowadays in uh, electric vehicle, uh, lithium ion batteries as an anode. And we also have LTO, lithium titanate oxide. This will help to achieve high power, high cycle life, safe, low voltage, and low specific energy. Uh, now coming to the cathode, the cobalt content in the cathode uh, is considered to add more cost to cell. So we have LFP, that is lithium ion phosphate. This has a long cycle life, high power, very safe, uh, but it has a very low specific energy. Next type is uh, lithium manganese oxide. Uh, this does not have a cobalt content, so the cost is comparatively less. But disadvantage is it has a low specific energy and cycle life. This is usually blended with NMC type uh, and currently used in Nissan Leaf and Chevy Bull. Next type is uh, NMC. Uh, this has a different combination of uh, uh, nickel, uh, manganese, and cobalt, which ranges from 1114332 and different types. Uh, this has a high specific energy, but it has a high cobalt content. Mostly, uh, the cathode material um, used in this EV, in EV application. The next type is the lithium uh, nickel cobalt aluminum oxide. This has a highest specific energy when compared to that of other cathode types. Highest specific power and low cobalt content than that of uh, NMC, but it is considered to be less safe. And NCA has become more popular uh, when they have got used to the Tesla's performance uh, because of low cobalt content in the Model 3. Uh, this is the graph which shows how the energy density varies between the cell chemistries. Now we will go through some of the future technologies of the battery and uh, um, improvements in the lithium ion cell chemistry. So uh, even though the LFP is considered to be low uh, energy density, now, most of the OEMs are coming back to LFP that is primarily due to low cost and cell to pack um, opportunity here. Here, instead of using modules, the cells are directly uh, packed inside the battery systems. And this looks to be more attractive. And most of the OEMs are favored for this. And uh, NCMA with an aluminum content, General Motors uh, Ultium battery is currently having this cell chemistry. And it is being explored with a joint venture of LG Chem. And other improvements in battery cell chemistry is uh, graphite along with silicon and silicon oxides. And cathode material going for NMC811, the maximum content of uh, nickel, which will help to improve this energy density. Uh, still, there are more room that we could see in the lithium ion chemistry. However, now we could see what are the opportunities we have in the future technologies of the battery beyond the lithium ion. First is uh, the solid state batteries. Here, the solid state batteries replaces high 
flammable liquid electrolyte it is safer high energy density could be the next generation of ev battery and major players working in this technology uh, are the toyota bmw and saft in partnership with solving siemens next type is a lithium air it uses oxygen as a cathode it has the highest specific energy and main issues uh, here in this type of cell chemistry is a cycle life low power water nitrogen filtering and samsung and many research labs have already worked uh, and started lithium sulfur uses uh, sulfur as the cathode and it has a higher specific energy and main issues are cycle life and the sulfur has low conductivity and expands during discharge the companies like oxys energy sion power try to commercialize this type of batteries the titanium neobate is being developed by toshiba uh, in order to replace the ltmo in the air what we saw before and this will support for higher energy density and it also helps to achieve the faster charging cycles or the faster charging um, other types of sodium ion magnesium ion components uh, and use of uh, Uh, super capacitors we call it as the graphene high capacity cathodes and high voltage cathodes uh, over and above the cell chemistry we also see an opportunity of increasing the system voltage uh, with uh, raising the voltage to 800 volt which will help to achieve the same power this is considered to be more efficient with a less heat generation due to high square or losses with a thinner bus bars uh, next type is on the cooling efficiency by uh, immersion cooling here the battery cell immersed in a dielectric liquid uh, so there are two types one is the outer circulation we call it as a phase one where the liquid remains in the liquid state and uh, the second is the phase two here the liquid boils and the change of state occurs from liquid to gas the last um, cooling efficiency what we could see here is the phase change material uh, the heat in the battery pack melts the phase change material to lower the temperature one of such example is the constellium pcm packs which stored inside the aluminum structure so we could see the challenges and opportunities in bb i will hand over to ganesh thank you thank you ram so the thanks ram for a uh, session so now that we will just uh, uh, go through what are all the challenges that we are expected to face and how do we convert all these challenges into opportunities some of the challenges ahead of us are how do we create and provide an affordable and efficient cars to the customers how can we provide an increased driving range today the range is the major concern for electric vehicle so there is already a lot of studies going on uh, to improve the driving range so that is one of the challenges ahead and cost of the vehicle normally uh, there is a perception that the ic vehicles are cheaper and electric vehicles are costlier so how do we manage that uh, differences and creating a charging infrastructure today we are we don't have that much of a charging infrastructure so that is a clearly a challenge ahead and the financing the fleet segment for example uh, for a, any normal startup companies or a small fleet groups in order to invest on ev they do have the financial challenges ahead and the next one is the barriers in localization of ev components as you know most of the electric vehicle components like the motors and the batteries and some of the charge controllers and power electronics are uh, imported from china and another companies and um, there is a very very minimal localization happening in india so these are all the barriers in localization and the last one which is still important is how do we recycle the batteries after the end of life of the vehicle so now that we discussed on the challenges now how do we convert these challenges to opportunities the first step is towards the make in india concept and the government from their side they're initiating a program called fame pmp fame as i mentioned is a, a faster adaptation and manufacturing of electric vehicles the pmp stands for phased manufacturing program the government is emphasizing on all the electric vehicle manufacturer to go for a localization of all the battery cells motors and etc they have a clear time plan so by which every oem is expected to manufacture the components locally so this helps in creating an employment opportunity in india mainly from the power electronic side and there is a lot of uh, studies going in the battery or in the areas how do we make a battery indigenously in india so this is a, a growth opportunity 
and from the mass market transportation right i think uh, mainly from the buses and the fleet car segment so this again create a opportunity so in, instead of owning a car so if the evs are going to be deployed for a mass market transportation there is a clear operating cost efficiency we can expect and the next one is in order to address the uh, range issue so there are uh, technologies uh, like the battery swapping battery leasing which can potentially become a separate business model so i have a separate slide on the battery swapping and uh, battery leasing which i will take you through and from an affordability point of view from a financial point of view as i mentioned in the earlier slides both the central government and the state governments are offering various uh, policy benefits and tax rebates so so those use of the gst and state wide uh, ev policy benefits will help in uh, you know reducing the cost of purchase and cost of ownership the last one as soon as the ev vehicles are uh, completing their life so how do we dispose the battery so there is a second life industries are coming up like the solar panel power storage systems and the power st uh, storage systems like the ups industries where they are uh, interesting to uh, buy the batteries from those uh, recycled vehicles and they can still use those batteries for energy storage system only reason is they may not be able to store the energy to 100 percentage but still it should be okay so that by the way we are reducing the uh, the number of batteries and we are able to recycle it next one ram next slide please thank you yeah so just wait for a second so i would like to just uh, mention uh, some of the uh, the challenges in ev one is the range anxiety ram can you help me i think uh, this okay thank you the slide is loaded now so the range anxiety so the, what is the range anxiety for example if i'm driving a car from a point a to point b so it should be a confident on from my side i should be able to reach that point without stopping off the car in between or the car should not be uh, running out of the battery charge so that's the range anxiety that everybody uh, thinks you know especially when they try to own an electric vehicle so that is the first challenge in the ev second one cost of the battery so again the perception is since the battery is the uh, almost i would say it's the heart of the electric vehicle and from a cost also the 50 percentage of the vehicle cost is almost related to the battery so there is a major concern that in people's mind and in manufacturers mind so what is the warranty terms of all this um, a battery how do we repair it what is the repairs expected so this is definitely one of the challenges the last challenge but it is still an important challenge is charging infrastructure so today in india there not much of a charging infrastructure is available and both in state highways national highways in cities so at present what i uh, know is it's about a 200 and plus public charging stations are currently operating in india and it is uh, the segment is completely unorganized most of the oems who sell the electric vehicles is what organizing the charging infrastructure to promote their products so but there are a lot more work to go on the charging infrastructure so now that we see the uh, challenges of the range anxiety cost of the battery and charging infrastructure now we'll see how do we address each of those next slide please thank you so this chart is an interesting chart if you see on the left hand side of the chart this shows the electric vehicle range offered by most of the global companies like the tesla hyundai kona jaguar renault nissan nissan leaf so if you see everybody is offering the range in terms of a minimum 280 to the maximum range of 600 so on an average you could see at least 400 to 500 kilometers is the minimum range that uh, the global oems are offering in their respective countries now we'll just take a step to see the right hand side chart these are all the some of the indian oems who are currently offering the uh, battery electric vehicles and let's look at the range so if you see mahindra everito tata tiger it is across various segments but if you see the range is still you know at a 200 plus range and only one vehicle which is the hyundai kona is offering a 452 but um, 
again uh, everybody has got their own perception so whether it is an suv uh, it is offering a higher battery range but clearly there is a difference between how the global oems are offering a range and how much is the range that we get it in india so there is a lot more work to go so more the range you offer so it will be a very very less range anxiety in customers mind and uh, it will be a less operating cost for example for a one single charge i can travel to 200 km or a 400 km people would choose 400 km so the way they are reducing the cost of charging so so the, the clearly this this problem is known to all the indian oems and everybody is working in terms of maximizing the ev range you know through various technologies as explained by ram you know through the battery technologies using the right battery chemistry trees and uh, charge balancing so many so many areas next slide yeah since that we talked about the battery cost so this is a, a chart on the left hand side shows in today what is the battery's demand at a 2015 if you see the battery demand is less than 200 gigawatt hour but the situation is going to grow by 2030 you see the demand of passenger electric vehicles which would be demanding a lithium ion battery so almost 70 to 80 percentage of the battery electric vehicles which is especially in the passenger segment would need a lot of electric battery mainly from the lithium ion chemistry so this shows that clearly the ev batteries demand is going to grow from now till 2030 this is first level of an evidence the second level of evidence is on the right hand side chart so the price of the battery pack so when we all started off in 2010 the battery price mainly for dollar the money per kilowatt hour is 1200 dollars but today the price is hovering anywhere between 200 to 180 dollars and the price is still going to reduce because of the improved chemistry better packaging specific energy thanks to all the r and d areas happening but by 2025 and 2030 the expectation is the dollar per kilowatt hour is going to be less than 100 even to the next extent of 60 to 70 dollar per kilowatt hour is what expected so when the battery cost is going to come down thanks to the demand also created so naturally the price of both the electric vehicle and the battery price is going to be at an affordable rate so as i said the reasons are primarily from the battery chemistry and there is a weight reduction is constantly happening and there is a mass production of the electric vehicles so when there is a larger demand price goes down so that's that's the simple math next slide please yeah let's talk about this uh, charging infrastructure i think which is a, a major concern uh, at least from an india perspective i'm sorry for the slide to get loaded yeah today if we see the uh, charging infrastructure for uh, various countries india is not even there so from 2012 to 2018 the major five countries are constantly investing on the charging infrastructure but today if we take the uh, statistics on 2018 as you could expect china is having close to uh, 300 plus uh, charging stations and uh, thousands basically so 300000 charging units are
I'm sorry, I don't hear Ganesh. I just wanted to confirm if anybody of you hear Ganesh. Hello. I think we lost Ganesh. Uh, I'm not able to hear. So probably I'll take you through the battery swapping. Uh, see, battery swapping, um, this has a different uh, selection points. And the battery swappable battery is one of the key look ahead from every manufacturers. And we already see the two wheelers and the, the three wheelers um, has this along with the commercial vehicle. And buses are also likely to move to battery swapping. And uh, the battery swapping is a unique opportunity because of the significant growth in shared mobility, considering uh, the challenges what we saw as high charging time, this battery swapping will help to reduce the time. The system will operate on uh, the pay as you go on basis, like when the customer will be able to purchase EV at a cost comparable price as that of the petrol and diesel cars. And that can be a rent basis uh, at the battery swapping station. The public sector giants such as uh, NTPC and the Power Grid Corporation of India may also work in order to setting up um, the swapping and the charging infrastructures. So the next topic is on the battery leasing. So one of the major constraints for getting a battery electric vehicle is the that will be greatly addressed with the help of the battery leasing process. So um, should you buy or lease a battery for electric vehicle? Uh, when, when buying an electric vehicle, soon to be the owners may be offered with either two options, either you can buy a vehicle with a battery or you can, you can buy the vehicle with a glider, excluding the battery. And the, the choice of the battery selection and fixing the battery is up to the owner and that can be with the help of a lease payment. So buying the battery involves forcing its maintenance, wear and tear and eventual recycling. And leasing the electric battery, it is also an option offered by few selected EV OEMs. Some of the two wheelers like uh, Revolt, we could see there is an option of battery leasing where the customers can get the vehicle and they can pay as an EMI for the battery. And other advantages of uh, the battery leasing are, the biggest advantage is it comes down the purchase uh, price of the all electric vehicle, considering we won't be paying for the battery as a one lump sum payment. And uh, the amount can also be adjusted depending on the chosen annual distance cover. The shorter the distance, the lower is the lease payment. And the battery has no bearing on the vehicle's resale because considering if you're wanting to get resale or exchange of vehicles to a new model, uh, since battery is not going to be the component of uh, the vehicle, uh, it is going to be only the glider portion. And in an electric vehicle, one of the depreciating uh, factor, what we could see is the battery life. Here, this battery leasing helps to overcome these issues. So, so these are the overviews on uh, the basics of electric vehicles and the technologies what we have currently in the market. Now I could open the floor for question and answers. I think I don't have Ganesh connected here still. But Ganesh, please confirm if you could be able to hear me. His name is displaying, but I don't know about his audio setups. I think uh, uh, we lost his audio. 
So let's let's open the floor for question and answers. Vinay sir, you are in panel only, sir. Hello. Vinay sir. Hello. Yeah. Ram. Yes, Ganesh. Yes, yes, sir. Hello, Ram. Yes, Ganesh. We could hear you. So it was an hello. Wonderful, uh, yeah, Ganesh, we could hear you. Please confirm if you could hear me. Ram, you are able to hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How about? I can hear you, Ganesh. Okay. Okay, sir. For the benefit of time, uh, let's open the session for the question and answers. Uh, I could also see some of the questions. Uh, yes, sir. There are window. a few okay. questions we had asked in the window. Yeah. The first question is, Ram, sir. Ganesh. Ram Ganesh, join. Her Mr. Prabha, her Ganesh, join. Ah, fine, sir. Fine, sir. Thank you. Yeah, we are ready for uh, question and answers, please. Sir, Thank you. Are, Sorry for the. No problem, sir. It was a wonderful, uh, more informative session. We are receiving uh, very positive uh, feedbacks also from our uh, participant side. So thanks, thanks uh, for your presentation, sir. So the questions uh, will be like, uh, sir, how will be in the future for battery electronic vehicle? Depends upon the economically wise. So future of battery. Vehicle. Yeah. Maybe I'll take this question, Ram, and if you want, you can pitch in. So as, as uh, Ram mentioned, there are uh, two technologies are uh, growing, right? One is there is a weight reduction constantly going on, so which helps in reducing the overall cost of the uh, vehicle, uh, especially from an IC vehicle. Today, if you see close to 1,800 plus parts are there in the IC vehicles, but whereas in the electric vehicle, it is only about 18 to 20 uh, moving parts. So there is a clear reduction in the number of parts, meaning there is a low number of parts. Cost is going to be affordable. Second one with the um, improvements in the battery chemistry uh, with the higher range. So naturally, the cost of purchase of electric vehicle will naturally come down. To what extent, we have to wait and watch. But today, if you see some of the OEMs in India, they are pricing the uh, battery electric vehicle less than 10 lakh band. And uh, this is over and above the uh, uh, the, the government's benefit of 1,50,000 for a 15 kilowatt uh, battery. Hour. So there is a two benefits for the end customer. Thank you, sir. There is uh, another uh, question also. What will be the procedure for lithium-ion battery dumping after use? How to decompose it? The policies are still not clear yet from the recycling of the lithium-ion batteries because we just started off the journey. Uh, I know Niti Ayog and uh, all the Siam and uh, Electric Vehicle Manufacturers Association, they're all drafting a, a proposal. So we are waiting. We are supposed to wait and then uh, watch what is the policy. Uh, it's going to be rolled out shortly. But at this point of time, uh, we don't have one. Thank you, sir. There are other I'll, uh, I'll, I'll also like to add another point on this. Fine, sir. Fine, sir. When, when we happen to hear from Aroy Automobile Research Association of India, they're also working on a process called urban mining. Because considering uh, the current days, we don't have the lithium um, as a resource in India, we usually get the batteries from China and uh, we have to import lithium. But considering when we are going to have more electric vehicles here and also employ, employing this uh, swapping stations and swapping technologies, we have the second use of all these batteries. And one more advantage with the help of urban mining process is to extract the lithium from the used batteries, which can be uh, recycled or revamped to make new batteries. And this will also improve the employment when compared to that of uh, in China, we can also become uh, the battery manufacturers in India. Thank you, sir. There is another question. What will be the safety in case of battery chemical leakage? 
while driving it will affect the human body and environment the batteries are tested to a, a greater extent i think uh, especially right from the cell level to the module level to the battery pack and then to the vehicle level systems so there are clearly much much stringent tests are happening so not one or two cases which you read it in the internet you know may not be the uh, uh, perception that you should carry on on an electric vehicle so the functional safety of electric vehicle is a very very stringent and every oem is investing heavily to make sure to protect the human being from a safety aspect so uh, please please uh, have the thoughts that uh, definitely the enough cares been taken in the uh, human safety so battery systems are going to be proven and it is safe to drive so adequate tests are there to confirm no leakage no hazards to the human team thank you sir there are uh, like two to, questions I, i would like to add one more point here as we saw the future technologies in batteries uh, instead of liquid electrolyte there is an option of going for a solid state batteries which is expected to be evs future battery chemistry with that solid state battery coming into this ev don't think there will be any leakage of uh, the electro liquid electrolyte that is possible here so let's hope for the solid state batteries coming into this ev market and that will entirely avoid any of the electro like leakage thank you sir there are uh, two questions from our uh, youtube uh, viewers one is uh, is it worth to purchase e vehicle at present or shall we wait for uh, some more time uh this is a different question to answer <laughs> because uh, it depends on the uh, individual customers need because if they think today they are uh, happy with the initial purchase price normally i i look for three things right as an individual so one is do you have a right charging infrastructure number one today in uh, the place where he's going to buy the car second one is what is the investment uh, he's planning third one is is he happy with the uh, range offered by the car and the fourth one i look is the uh, battery warranty the oem are offering so if if he is satisfied with this all four he can definitely purchase yeah one Thank more you. to add here uh, it also depends on the usage of the vehicle so if it is going to be uh, used for a daily office commute and the distance travel is going to be a definite one uh, considering that we can have an electric vehicle even that irrespective of the vehicles as of um, two wheelers or four wheelers because you you know how much distance you will be traveling every day and you can put the charge this will in turn have a benefit over the fuel consumption or you know, the running cost can be greatly reduced in this case okay there is another question actually i think the same answer what you gave for this question will suit for that also what are okay. the consideration we have to make while buying an electric vehicle so the yeah, whatever that is, that points is, you have said yeah. uh, will match for this also correct I, correct sir you, thank you thank you sir we will have a last question uh, sir is there any alternative for lithium ion battery for lightweight vehicles with at least less efficiency ram would you like to take it please i think we went through the future technologies of the battery there are many options which every oems are currently working on so the solid state battery because all these batteries what you could see so these are um, over and above the existing lithium or uh, lithium ion cell chemistry the solid state batteries are uh, lithium sulfur where most of the sulfur component is used as the cathode and uh, lithium air this also has a highest specific energy and we could also see some of the technology innovations from the tesla where they are trying to improve the the chemistry of the cathode uh, what we see in here right ncma with the content of aluminum addition to um, lithium nmc batteries you could see the cell energy density is greatly reduced so when the cell energy density is increased so the whatever what we get from 1 kg is increasing because of which if for example if you want to use 40 kilowatt hour battery with an increased cell chemis- increased cell energy density the weight corresponding to that of 40 kilowatt hour can be greatly improved so when you use an lfp battery in order to achieve the 40 kilowatt hour the weight consumed is going to be more because of cell, less cell energy density but when you go with an increasing cell chemistry where the energy density is increasing with an improved cell chemistry we could achieve the same 
kilowatt hour uh, battery capacity with the reduced weight. Hope that answers the question. So, thank you, sir. Thanks for your uh, patiently answering all our questions and uh, sharing your valuable time and the expertise uh, among the students community and the teaching fraternity. Now, uh, I invite uh, Professor Dr. Vijendra Babu, sir, who has joined in this webinar. Yes. Who is uh, an, uh, yes. always a supporter uh, for us in all our activities. With his own interest and keen uh, about, about this uh, battery increase joined in this uh, webinar. Sir, uh, please share your views. Uh, uh, thank you, Sundar. Uh, thanks, Professor Prabhu. Thanks, Professor Dr. Prabhagar for this organizing this wonderful session. I first of all thank uh, Mr. Ganesh Shankaran for uh, visiting our AVT campus virtually. Uh, we're happy to see him in our campus. We work in the same platform as VMKVC Alumni Association. Welcome, Ganesh. Happy to see you. And it thank you, sir. Thank you so much. He is an active member as a joint secretary. And it's a nice collaboration session, both Mr. Ganesh Shankaran and Mr. Ramakrishnan Sivasubramaniam. Uh, so whatever the question asks, it's a combination of both. It's an add point. It shows the enthusiasm and the hard efforts they have made to prepare the slides. As a nutshell, we can say that this is a five days program or an FDP oriented program, which they are compressed in one and a half hours. A wonderful session. It gives an overall exploration of all those uh, questions in mind about electric vehicles, batteries, and futuristic technologies. We are happy. Uh, it was a nice session. I think there was a huge reviews and huge responses from all over the participants. And I request Ganesh to consider an opportunity to interact with AVAT and Port for uh, any uh, opportunities for having an electric vehicles for study purpose. Uh, so we'll be very happy to utilize this uh, opportunity from Port also. Thank you, sir. Sure. Thank you, Ganesh. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your uh, concluding remarks. That was Dr. Rajan Babu, sir, Vice Principal of uh, Institute of Technology. I request uh, Professor L. Prabhu, sir, to give concluding remarks. Dr. Department, Professor L. Prabhu, sir. Prabhu, sir, please uh, give concluding remarks. No, sir. Hello. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Actually, there was a technical problem just now only have unmuted me. I really thank the resource person for their uh, excellent uh, explanation about the battery vehicle and software technologies. I really thank the part there is the participants for their patience, which we had. We had some few technical faults in between. Really good. Uh, and hope that uh, many of the students have learned about the concepts of uh, uh, electric battery vehicle and its opportunities. Once again, I thank our uh, Vice Principal part-time, Dr. Vijayendra Babu sir, for uh, joining us in this uh, webinar. I hope that we'll have uh, more uh, webinars in the future. I request the participants to follow our uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, and uh, other social media. We'll be in touch with you. As I said, uh, just a reminder about uh, the national conference, which is scheduled on 20, uh, that is June 24th and 25th, and also about the CNC tra tra training. Already we have shared that uh, link in the chat box. We'll be sending you interested uh, participants can join. And also I request uh, the resource persons to identify certain students for internship when the lockdown is over. Uh, if, even if it is through online also, if any uh, thing can be given like uh, e-internship, online internship, that will be very helpful for us. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I thank the organizer Prabhakar and Sindhil for arranging such a wonderful uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thanks for your uh, concluding remarks. I request Dr. Prabhakar to... I request the participant, please switch on your video once. You don't need to take a photograph. Please, all of you switch on the, switch on the video once. <clears throat> I 
I request the participant please stand the ones. Thank you. Thanks for your uh, smiley faces uh, in this wonderful uh, session. I request Dr. Prabhagar to give away the formal uh, thanks note and uh, close this uh, webinar. I, I would like to thank the uh, management of AVAT and our HOD, our principal, vice principal, and uh, campus director. Uh, for the uh, wonderful support for this uh, webinar to be conducted in a grand successful manner. I, uh, I sincerely convey my thanks to uh, today's guest of uh, 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 Mr. Ganesh and Ramakrishnan from Ford Motors Limited for their wonderful uh, uh, viewpoints and insights related to the battery operated electric vehicles. Really a wonderful session. I thank the participants for their uh, patience uh, to listen to this uh, wonderful webinar till the end of this session. Thank you once again. Thank you all. Thank you all Thank uh, you, for sir. joining. Thank, Thank you all for Thank you. Uh, joining. Please uh, follow us in our uh, social media, avg.ac.in, the FB page, Twitter, and uh, Instagram also. Lot of, lot of events are upcoming, as said by our HOD, the CNC training program, our uh, e-conference. The next week we are having an IPR uh, one week FDP like that. Uh, the n number of programs have been continuously organized by our uh, college and also by the Department of Mechanical Engineering. Please follow us through all our uh, programs. Thank you all for joining. Stay safe, stay home. Miles to go before we sleep, miles to go before we sleep. Thank you all for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.